two of the strategic objectives of the um, the Russians are to divide and weaken NATO and to divide uh, and weaken the EU. And of course, it's partly Russian, uh, wrong, Western intelligence, particularly uh, the intelligence of the Americans and uh, the, the capability of the NSA, their national security agency, and uh, the way that they can sweep everything in the world in terms of communications, which gives them, again, tactical tip-offs on an international uh, stage. There are other stories making headlines, both at home and abroad. And this one is very significant. It's from Ukraine and President Zelensky who has taken action. Um, he claims that over 60 officials from Ukraine's security service and prosecutor's office were working against Ukraine in Russian-occupied territories. 651 separate treason and collaboration cases have been opened against Ukrainian police and other law enforcement officials. So what can we deduce from this? Let's talk to Major General Chip Chapman, former head of counterterrorism and UK operations in the Ministry of Defence. Major General, good evening to you. Good evening, Henry. Hi. So what can we deduce from this? Because these are quite bold moves by President Zelensky. They are. I think you have to go back initially to a thing we used to call the Gerasimov Doctrine. He's still there, the head of the uh, armed forces. And the notion there was that you'd hack an enemy society rather than uh, confronting it head on. Therefore, the force of politics would be in uh, primus inter paris rather than the politics of force. So you would weaken the political entity of Ukraine to such an extent that the three-day thunder run to Kiev in the, from the 24th of February would succeed. Now, obviously, the FSB, that is the successor agency to the KGB in Russia, got that wrong in that Ukraine wasn't compromised to the extent that they thought, and the political polity didn't uh, fall over. But they still have to resist Russian intrigues, and you always have fifth columnists in war. And that is the case because of what we call compromat, or compromise in, uh, in English, which really has for the sort of four strands. People do this for either revenge, ideology, money, or ego. So what Zelensky is doing is clearing out uh, the, um, the, the ones that he thinks are collaborators and traitors, which you're probably always going to have in war. And he's also being pointed to the fact that Western agencies have said that certainly the top guy in the SBU, that's um, Ivan Bak- Bakanov, who was a childhood friend of uh, Zelensky's, has underperformed. So that's the context of this uh, that we see. But even though they were compromised to such an extent Um, You know, the Russian performance, regardless of that, is still being pretty atrocious, which shows you that the Ukrainians have risen as a nation in terms of their opposition to the Russian invasion. Uh, How could President Zelensky be so certain, certain to the point of even getting rid of or suspending his childhood friend and um, the prosecutor general? Because these are people in very influential positions, people who have the capacity to make mischief if they're not happy with him. He must have really robust intelligence. Well, of course, you have a counterintelligence uh, agency within your uh, within your security agencies, yeah. and it's that which, along with your uh, international partners, will give you the um, sort of tactical tip-offs, as it were, to um, make sure that you can find these guys. That goes on all the time in both peace and war. Um, you know, that is on a daily basis, and we saw it this week with, for example, the intelligence security report on right-wing extremism, which was released this week in the UK, which again said that Russia was trying to use right-wing extremists in the UK to fracture society in the same way that the Russians always try and fracture democracy in the West. And when you look at some of the successes Russia has had since its evasion of the 24th of February, are there any operations you can point to which you think could only have been done uh, with the help of people working against their own country? Well, the one which uh, seems to be the one with with the greatest agency is the successes in the south around uh, towards Kherson, less successful towards Kharkiv and Kiev. But uh, certainly in terms of one of the major bridges there, that could only have been uh, done by um, insider information by the SBU, that is the uh, security service of Ukraine, probably to the FSB, as I said, the the main overseas agency in the uh, Commonwealth of Independent States in Russia. And when you consider the long and close ties between Moscow and Kiev, you'd imagine that the Ukrainians would also similarly have planted agents in Moscow and elsewhere. Any sense that these plants, well, one, if they're there, two, are they helping? Are they working? And if they're not effective, why not? 
I'm sure they're there and I'm sure they're working, but it's wider than that. Because again, two of the strategic objectives of the, um, the Russians are to divide and weaken NATO and to divide uh, and weaken the EU. And of course, it's partly Russian, uh, wrong, Western intelligence, particularly uh, the intelligence of the Americans and uh, the, the capability of the NSA, their national security agency, and uh, the way that they can sweep everything in the world in terms of communications, which gives them, again, tactical tip-offs on an international uh, stage. And when you look at the direction of the war, I remember some weeks ago, I think you and I spoke, and I mean, you may not have said directly that the Ukrainians can win, but the the consensus was that the Ukrainians were doing far better than people are expecting, the Russians were doing far worse, and that the Russians were getting bogged down. What would you say is the current picture? I think that's still largely true. Of course, all this notion that a couple of weeks ago, the sort of defeatists were saying when uh, Severodonetsk uh, and Lachansk were sort of under pressure and that Russia was winning is, is kind of a meaningless concept. Uh, wars are fought for political reasons. So the key question is, are Russia or uh, Ukraine fulfilling their political objectives? And you then have to look at why fighting stops. And it's not going to stop at the moment because there's an improbability of victory. There's an improbability of a decisive military victory for either side. And at the moment, no side has unacceptable costs. Those unacceptable costs, both moral, politically, economic and military, could come if we don't stop, uh, if we if we stop supporting Ukraine, which we must do. I think you really have to look at uh, someone like Avril Haines, who's a uh, director of national intelligence in America, she briefs the president, so is Primus Interparis there, who really said there are three scenarios at the moment for the future. The first one is that this will remain a grinding struggle, which I think it will. The second one is that Russia makes a breakthrough and refocuses on Kyiv or Odessa. That doesn't look like it's going to happen at the moment with the reset that they're going through at the moment. And the third one is that Ukraine stabilizes the front lines and begins to make smaller gains like the Incurs and, and elsewhere in southern Ukraine, which they are doing. But that doesn't mean at the moment that either side has the combat power for a decisive military operation or to obtain their political objectives. So this is going to grind on for a long time, particularly, I think, uh, the rest of the year. All right, Major General Chip Chapman, former head of counterterrorism and UK operations in the MOD, thank you very much indeed for joining us on Times Radio.